Hello, this is Michelle with Michelle Bells Gaming, and today I'm going to talk to you about the MSX2 computer and using it with the XRGB Mini FrameMeister. So if you don't already know, the FrameMeister is an upscaler designed to be used with different video game consoles. Of course, it can be used for a number of different things, but its major purpose was for video game consoles and putting them on HD televisions to get the best video quality possible. Now this device is really great because it has a number of different inputs. It has standard AV inputs, S-Video, there's two HDMI inputs, there's the Japanese component input and HDMI uh, output, and as you can see here, RGB input, which is what we're going to use. Now, I mentioned the HDMI output, and that is designed normally for putting it on an HD television in, say, 720p, which is what it looks best at. Um, but also, it has DVI modes, which basically gives you a number of uh, computer resolutions. And these resolutions work really well with a computer monitor, such as this one. So, in order to do that, I have a small adapter here, which basically just takes HDMI and puts out a VGA, and this particular one also has an audio port. You don't necessarily need that, uh, depending on what you're doing, but it helps, so uh, that's really good. If you're using RGB, the audio is all in one cable, so it can be difficult if you're playing, say, Super Nintendo or something, and there's no audio. But, in this case, it's not important. Um, our MSX here has audio going to a stereo in the other room, so that doesn't matter. So, for video, we have our computer monitor here, which is a CRT monitor, and we have a um, standard CRT television using the normal AV. Now, this RGB cable here uh, this adapter comes with the frame meister, and this is the cable here that goes to the back of your um, MSX2 computer. And they're fairly standard. I think there are a few random MSX models made by some of the lesser known companies that have a slightly different pin design, uh, pin layout, but uh, most of them are identical. So uh, you should be able to just go online and buy that cable pretty cheap. And um, I think I only paid about 1300 yen for mine, which is maybe about $12 or so, maybe a little less. Um, but you can't use, say, a Sega Mega Drive or other uh, cables because they have a slightly different pin layout. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll turn it on and show you. For comparison, we have Dragon Quest. So what you'll notice is that it takes a second for this screen to catch up, and the reason is because the Frame Meister has a special RGB sync mode, and so whenever it detects a change in the resolution, or when you're starting the system, it actually takes a second before displaying the image on screen to sync with the video. And this is normally not a problem, but it can occasionally be annoying if you're playing a game that's constantly changing resolution. Uh, not very many did that. There are a few Nintendo 64 games that will do that. Say the opening may be in a different resolution than the menu or something like that. Um, and I've ran into one or two visual novels that were poorly coded visual novels that change resolutions, that they basically change screen modes in between pictures and text. Uh, and that can be a little bit of annoyance, but it's rare. So here we've got the Frame Meister on, and we've got the scan line settings on, which maybe you can't see very well on here, but it looks very nice. And then there's our CRT television. You can easily see how much cleaner this picture is, even though perhaps it's not as bright. So let's set our message speed to fast. Now one of the things that you can see here is that the picture is very, very clean and very sharp here, and on this CRT television, it's very, very blurry. It's almost, it's, it's really almost impossible to make out the letters if you don't really know what you're looking at. 
So let's put in a name. Ah. Uh, and start. So now we're in the main game, and as you can see, it's a, uh, you know, it's not so bad. You can see the letters and that kind of thing. But on this, there's definite blur and blending and kind of um, sort of that reddish halo effect around uh, letters and things. And here, it's all crystal clear and sharp. Again, it's not as vivid as the TV because the CRT television really just pushes out a lot of color and brightness. But it is a lot cleaner. One of the really nice things about this is that if you've got an HDMI capture device, which I will show you later, you can actually output straight through that capture device and get perfect crystal clear quality when you're capturing, if you want to put it on YouTube or something like that. So I'm going to skip through this here and then I'm just going to take you outside so that you can see kind of the basic difference of how this looks. So first we'll grab our boxes here, gold and some item, I think it's the, uh, the wooden sword thing which you're supposed to get at the beginning, and the key. And then we'll use the key. the steps. Let's see here. And walk out. So here on this screen you can really see the difference between the two visual modes. There's a lot more brightness over on the CRT, but there's just a lot of blending and blur and things that just doesn't make it look as sharp. And here it's very sharp and clean. Now, you might prefer the CRT television in some respects, but in general, it's not going to look quite as good as this monitor. And one thing that you do have is you do have some borders here, and that's actually because this particular screen resolution that the MSX is showing is not exactly 4 to 3. Um, the Frame Meister does have some zoom and stretching options that would allow you to get rid of that, but I don't have that on for right now. Okay, so that's general how it looks, and I'm going to, uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to put some vid video captures from my computer that you can really see uh, full quality what the difference is between the two. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you next time.